students in my second year of medical studies in the University of Damascus. Um, as the uprising started in Syria in March 2011, I was very touched by the courage and resilience of the people, of the Syrian people, in their plight for democracy and freedom. That's why I decided to take well, to take rule in the uh, uprising activities, the peaceful activities in Damascus. On November 3rd, 2011, while on the university campus, I was captured, beaten up, and detained by the Syrian regime agents. My sin was that I had distributed some flyers with slogans written on them asking for freedom and dignity. Later that day and for the following month, I had to discover firsthand what the consequences were to ask for freedom under the Assad regime. I was taken to the Air Force Intelligence in Hasta. I was placed in a solitary confinement in a small underground cell. From my cell, I was able to hear the voices of people being tortured and interrogated. I spent many sleepless nights listening to the noise of pain coming from prisoners being tortured and questioned. It was unbearable psychological torture. Although detention, torture, and threats of rape are horrifying experiences, I still consider myself among the lucky survivors. Looking back now, and after seeing the scope of the regime's crimes, I feel that my experience is really dwarfed by the suffering of other detainees and the losses and sacrifices of the Syrian people. My story is uncomparable to the stories of systematic rape, large-scale starvation, horrific torture, and cold-blooded murder that are inflicted upon so many innocent people in my country until this very day. Even though none of the slogans written in my flyers were directed against Bashar al-Assad, I was seen as a threat to the regime and consequently was detained for a month. My friends and I were demanding basic human rights. We were calling for freedom, dignity, and democracy. Our cry was that we dream of a better future. We love Syria and we loved Syria and we believe that this country and its people deserve and can achieve the best quality of life. We believe in building a country in which all the people are treated equally, respectfully, and under the rule of law, and that's why the revolution started in the first place. From the beginning of the revolution, the regime systematically targeted civilian activists, doctors, journalists, and community leaders. This policy of the regime has resulted in an armed conflict that has plagued Syria. But as you all saw, after two weeks of ceasefire, after two weeks of a truce, the Syrian people went back to the streets, marching and asking for the same demands that we started the revolution for. Finally, I want to thank you for having me to speak before you today. And on behalf of my friends who are still in Syria, I want to tell you that the, that the Syrian people did, did not start this revolution in any hateful spirit against anyone, but only in love for freedom and in pursuit of democracy and dignity. And until today, so many Syrians are still against all odds working and dying to achieve that dream. Thank you so much. Bashar Assad, Bashar Assad.